Here we're told we have a blimp that's five meters in diameter and 60 meters long. Let's sketch this out. So we've got some blimp. It's five meters in diameter and 60 meters long. And we're told that we're going to study this in a wind tunnel. So if the speed of the blimp through still air is 10 meters per second, and if a one-tenth scale model is to be tested in the wind tunnel, so in the wind tunnel everything is uh, 10 times smaller, so this would be 6 meters, and this would be a half a meter. The question is, what is the airspeed in the wind tunnel that's needed for dynamic similarity? Actually, I should probably draw the, the speed of this thing going the other way so that the wind is coming at it. So it's 10 meters per second. The question is, what speed do I need over here in the wind tunnel to make sure we have dynamic similarity. And we're told to assume the same air temperature and pressure for both the prototype and the model. So the prototype is this one over here, the full scale, and the model is the small one over here. So in order to have dynamic similarity, we want to make sure that the Reynolds numbers are the same between the two. That's the significant dimensionless parameter that'll be important here because it's, it's the ratio of inertial to viscous forces, which is really what's dominating here. So we want the Reynolds number in the prototype and the Reynolds number in the model to be the same. So the Reynolds number is just the velocity times the length scale, which would be, let's say, the diameter, divided by the kinematic viscosity of the air. And we want that for the prototype to be the same thing for the model. So we can go ahead and rearrange this. First of all, you know that the kinematic viscosity of the air is the same because we're using the same air temperature and pressure. It's, it's the same air. So it's exactly the same. So the velocity in the model, which is what we're trying to find, will be equal to the velocity in the prototype times the diameter of the prototype divided by the diameter of the model. And we're told that the velocity of the prototype is 10 meters per second. It's right up here. Remember, this is the prototype, the full scale thing. And the diameter ratio in the model, um, it's the diameter of the prototype divided by the diameter of the model. We're told that the model is a one tenth scale, so this would be like one over one tenth, right? So, or if you'd rather, you could actually plug in, you know, the, the, the 60 meters here and the six meters here, and you'll see that it comes out to be a value of 10. It's, a, it's the exact same thing that I just wrote here. So then, when you substitute this in, or actually multiply it out, you'll get that the velocity in the model should be 100 meters per second. So we want to make sure that this speed in the wind tunnel is 100 meters per second. That's getting to be a, a pretty high velocity, but it's still just low enough to where compressibility effects wouldn't be significant. Recall that uh, for compressibility to be significant, you need to be operating at Mach numbers greater than about a third the speed of sound, which in air under ordinary conditions would be, you know, something on the order of like 110 meters per second. So we're right at the edge of where compressibility would be negligible. All right, that's all there is to this example, so we'll end it there.